Hi everybody, uh, my name is Alvin Louie. I just wanted to tell you how grateful I am for all the work that you guys are doing to protect your children, to protect my daughter. Um, some of you may know, I moved my young family from California about a year ago. And uh, you know we've seen this play out in California and we've seen the end results. Uh, I just wanted to share two real quick stories with you. One is um, last year my wife had uh, gone into Ikea and she got this cranky old lady, this cranky old white lady, uh, you know, checking her out uh, at the register. And she came home and the first thing she said was, boy, this lady was just mean. She must have just had a real bad day. And I said, eh, you know, you're working at Ikea. It's, you know, it's always so busy. You know, I, I can understand that. Anyway, that was it. Then like the next day or the day after that, she had to go back to Ikea to return something because something didn't work for her. And then she saw the lady again and she says, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna get in her line, right? So she goes to the line next to her. And then she looks over and this lady, she's mean to everybody. She's just a cranky old lady, right? Let me tell you how this plays out uh, to uh, people in California and what they're trying to uh, push into the schools, how they want to raise people. She would have came home, the conversation would have been like this. This white lady at Ikea is really mean to me. It's probably because I'm Chinese and it's in the middle of COVID and we're in Indiana. Indiana's really racist. You know, Carmel's really racist. She got on Facebook. You know, I was, I was in Ikea, this lady. I think I just because I was Chinese. That's what, it, it has to be that. It has to be that. Then everybody would get on and, oh, you're so brave and you shouldn't have to put up with this. And, oh my God, this is why we need diversity and inclusion. And you know that, right? But you see, this is what they train kids to do. They train kids to read minds. They train children to grow up, to look at it. How fucking miserable is that? How much better of a life and mentally, emotionally does my wife have because she comes home, we kind of laugh it off, we actually feel kind of bad for her. And the next day, we, we find, she was just cranky anyway. She's a cranky lady. People that come on Facebook and do that, even if they go back the next day to Ikea and they see that the lady's cranky, they don't come back and say, hey guys, yesterday, false alarm, she was just really cranky. It wasn't because I was Asian or Chinese. That never happens. Second story. We were, uh, I'm on a, my name is on an, on an event and uh, oftentimes uh, my last name gets spelled incorrectly. Uh, Louis, L-U-I, but there's also another Chinese name that's spelled L-I-U that's actually more common. It happens all the time. So anyway, um, that was spelled wrong. My wife and I were talking about it. My daughter heard me and she goes, oh, someone spelled your name wrong. And I said, yeah, it's, you know, just on this little, you know, flyer or whatever. And she says, oh yeah, oh, they spelled your name wrong. It's not good. And I said, well, I go, and then my wife and I said, well, you know, people spell people's name wrong all the time. We pronounce people's name wrong. You're going to do it. Other people's going to do it to you. And then we said, so what happens if someone spells your name wrong? What do you think happens? And she's kind of thought about it. She's five. She thought about it. She goes, I don't know, nothing. We go, yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. You can correct them if you like, and then you move on. And then she said, okay, and then bounced off. That's it. Took 30 seconds. This is the kind of crap that they try to shove into your kids under that D-I-E, this die ideology. Is that if somebody says your name wrong or someone doesn't pronounce your name just right or spells it just right or doesn't look exactly like you, there's all this and then they use all these words that mean nothing. They just take English words and throw it together. Implicit this and unbiased that. I want to let you know that here in India, in Carmel and all the surrounding cities, we have been so welcomed. We have met the most friendly people I think I've ever met in my life. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Indiana's racist, that Carmel's racist, that because you're a white person, that you don't know this and you don't know that. These people that are pushing it, they're loons. They do not love minorities. They love us as pets. If I came on and I said, oh, my daughter was experiencing this from a white person, that from a white person, they would welcome us with open arms like we were uh, rescue puppies. But the moment I said, you know what? My daughter doesn't need this. Just teach her education, leave the rest at home. Oh, the nastiness comes out. The nastiness comes out, right? So the facade falls off really fast when a minority doesn't play their game because it's not about inclusion or compassion or safety. 
They're fucking narcissists. That's what they are. They're narcissists. Okay. So the work that you guys are doing, do it harder, do it more. Don't ever let anybody tell you that what you guys are doing is, that you guys don't know because you're white. Keep education, education, leave the rest at home. But I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, and you guys are doing an amazing work and I really, really appreciate it. Looking forward to meeting you guys. Bye.